Hey there, health warriors. Have you ever wondered why humans are carnivores? It's a question that's been asked for centuries, and one that we're going to explore today. We're on a mission to unravel the mystery of our meat-based diet, delving into the depths of our biology and evolution to find the answers. Our journey with an examination of our stomachs. Not the most glamorous of places, but a critical piece of the carnivore puzzle. Here's a fun fact. Humans have a stomach acidity level that ranges between 1.5 and 3.5, similar to that of obligate carnivores, and astonishingly, comparable to a vulture known for consuming carrion. This acidity plays a vital role in breaking down tough animal proteins and killing bacteria found in meat. It's a clear sign that our bodies are designed to handle and process meat effectively. But our stomachs aren't the only part of our digestive system that's adapted to a carnivorous diet. There's an entire cocktail of enzymes at play, working to break down animal proteins into peptides. Our pancreas also gets in on the action, secreting enzymes that are particularly adept at digesting proteins from meat. And let's not forget our digestive tract. It's shorter than that of herbivores, indicating a preference for meat digestion rather than the fermentation of plant matter. Our appendix, too, narrates a tale of carnivorous evolution. Once a longer organ that assisted in digesting cellulose from plants, it's now a vestigial organ, having atrophied and lost its primary function as our diet became more meat-focused. From our teeth, sharp and ideal for tearing flesh, to our jaws, capable of powerful vertical chewing movements perfect for consuming meat, our anatomy exposes our carnivorous nature. Even our intestines, shorter relative to our body size compared to herbivores, reflect an adaptation to a high-quality, nutrient-dense diet like meat. Yet, we struggle with plant consumption. Fibers pass through our digestive system mostly undigested, and plant defense chemicals can interfere with nutrient absorption and damage our gut lining. So join us as we journey back to the roots of our carnivorous nature. We're about to reveal the fascinating story of human evolution and diet, explaining why our bodies are so skilled at consuming meat and why plants pose such a challenge. It's a journey that will forever change the way you perceive your dinner plate. The human stomach, a potent brew of highly acidic juices, ready to break down our next meal. This isn't accidental, but a clear indicator of our meat-based dietary habits. Our stomach acidity ranges from 1.5 to 3.5, on par with obligate carnivores. This is so intense, in fact, that the human stomach can dissolve a razor blade in a matter of days. This high acidity is crucial for two main reasons. First, it breaks down tough animal proteins into simpler forms for easier absorption. Second, it neutralizes harmful bacteria commonly found in meat, protecting us from potential infections. Now let's dive a bit deeper into the process. The stomach produces an enzyme called pepsin, which is particularly effective at breaking down animal proteins into peptides. These peptides then become the building blocks for our own proteins, supporting everything from muscle growth to immune function. Beyond the stomach, our digestive adaptations continue. Compared to herbivores, we have a relatively short digestive tract. This shorter length is not ideal for fermenting plant matter, as seen in herbivores, but it's perfectly suited for digesting meat efficiently. It allows rapid absorption of nutrients from meat before they have a chance to rot in our gut. Our pancreas also plays a key role in this meat processing machine. It secretes a range of enzymes, including trypsin and chymotrypsin. These enzymes further break proteins from meat into individual amino acids, the simplest form of proteins, which can then be absorbed and used by our body. These collective features, the highly acidic, the razor blade dissolving abilities, the production of pepsin, the short digestive tract, and the secretion of specific pancreatic enzymes, all point towards one thing, they show us that our bodies are not just capable of processing meat, but they are specifically adapted to do so efficiently and effectively. Clearly, our stomachs are more than ready handle our carnivorous cravings and razor blades alike. So, the next time you sit down to a steak dinner, remember, it's not just about taste, it's about our evolutionary journey, the intricate adaptations and the awe-inspiring capabilities of our stomach that make us fundamentally carnivorous. Have you ever pondered over that tiny organ nestled in your abdomen? The appendix, a vestige of our evolutionary past. This apparently pointless organ actually has an exciting narrative to unfold. 
It's a saga of evolution, adaptation, and shifts in dietary preferences. There was a time when our forefathers were primarily herbivorous, feasting on a plant-based diet. Their bodily functions were designed to accommodate this, and the appendix played a pivotal role. Back in the day, the appendix was considerably larger and bustling with activity, primarily breaking down cellulose, a complex carbohydrate in plant cells that we digest without some assistance. But, as our ancestors' menu started incorporating more meat, our digestive practices had to adapt. The requirement for an organ to digest cellulose diminished, setting the appendix on its path towards redundancy. It began to decrease in size, its significance dwindling. Today, the human appendix is merely a fraction of its former self, a petite, seemingly pointless organ that's no longer instrumental in digestion. But don't write it off just yet. As an interesting fact, even though it's considered a vestigial organ, it's not entirely redundant. Recent studies imply that the appendix could serve as a sanctuary for beneficial bacteria, a backup ready to restore our intestinal flora following an illness. It's like a safe house for friendly bacteria, a plan B when things don't go as planned in digestive system. Therefore, the appendix isn't entirely purposeless. It's a testament to our evolutionary journey, an emblem of change and adaptation. It's a nod to our past, a time when our dietary choices were vastly different. From lush vegetation to quality meat cuts, our appendix narrates a tale of evolution. It's a compelling chronicle of how we, as a species, have adjusted in response to our shifting diet patterns. And while it may seem insignificant, it's a critical part of the jigsaw that is human evolution. From our teeth to our intestines, our bodies scream carnivore. This statement may seem surprising at first glance, but when we delve into the anatomical intricacies of our bodies, the evidence becomes hard to ignore. Take our teeth, for the human dentition is an array of sharp canines and incisors, perfect for tearing into a juicy steak or crunching through a succulent chicken wing. These are complemented by flat, sturdy molars at the back, built for grinding meat into digestible morsels. This combination of tearing and grinding teeth is characteristic of omnivores, a group that includes meat-eating species. Then we have our jaw musculature, Unlike herbivores, who have jaws designed for lateral grinding motion to break down tough plant fibers, humans have jaws that excel at a powerful vertical chewing motion. Here's a fun fact. This vertical motion is not only similar but almost identical to that of lions and tigers, the big cats who are some of the most efficient predators in the animal kingdom. This is ideal for tearing and masticating meat, a task that our jaws perform with remarkable efficiency. Moving further down, we come to our intestines. Interestingly, the length of an animal's intestines often gives clues about its diet. Herbivores, who need to extract nutrients from fibrous plant matter, tend to have long intestines. Carnivores, on the other hand, have shorter intestines, which are more suited for quickly processing and absorbing nutrients from meat. Humans fall into the latter category. Our intestines are relatively short when compared to our body size, suggesting an adaptation to a high quality, nutrient-dense diet that includes meat. These anatomical hints are not mere coincidences. They are the result of millions of years of evolution, shaping and molding our ancestors to survive and thrive on a diet that included meat. They are the physical manifestations of our carnivorous past, etched into the very fabric of our bodies. So, while we are capable of consuming a wide range of foods thanks to our omnivorous flexibility, the evidence points towards a strong meat influence in our dietary evolution. Our bodies, it seems, have been shaped by our carnivorous past. But what about plants? Are we not designed to eat them too? Well, let's dive into that. While can and do eat plants, our bodies show some distinct limitations when it comes to processing them. One of the biggest challenges is cellulose, a major component of plant cell walls. Here's a fun fact. Humans are one of the few species that can't digest cellulose. It's a pretty exclusive club. You see, humans lack the necessary enzymes to break down cellulose. This means that fiber, which is largely made up of cellulose, passes through our digestive system, mostly undigested. So, while we can eat plants, we're not exactly extracting all the potential nutrients from them. Plants aren't just sitting ducks either. They've evolved a range of defense chemicals like lectins, oxalates, and phytates to deter predators, including us humans. These compounds can interfere with nutrient absorption, 
and may even damage the gut lining. It's a bit like a chemical warfare playing out right on our dinner plates. Adding to the struggle, unlike ruminants with specialized stomachs for fermenting plant material, humans have a limited fermentation capacity in the colon. This makes it difficult for us to extract energy from fibrous plants, further highlighting our limitations when it comes to plant consumption. So while we can enjoy a salad or snack on an apple, it's clear that our bodies are not optimally designed for a plant-based diet. We can participate in the plant world, sure, but it seems our anatomy and physiology have a carnivorous bias that makes us naturally inclined toward a meat-based diet. While we can eat plants, it seems we're not exactly built for it. So are we carnivores? Let's summarize. From our highly acidic stomachs adept at breaking down animal proteins, to our teeth designed for tearing and grinding meat, our bodies exhibit numerous adaptations suited for a carnivorous diet. On the other hand, our struggles with fiber digestion and harmful plant defense chemicals emphasize our limitations in plant. Here's an amusing fact, folks. Despite all these carnivorous adaptations, we humans are actually considered omnivores. We have the astonishing ability to consume and digest a diverse range of foods, not just meat. This illustrates our species' impressive dietary flexibility. All these factors underline our evolutionary journey towards a meat-based diet, but also hints at our omnivorous capabilities. Thank you for joining us on this journey into our carnivorous past. Remember to like, share and subscribe for more fascinating insights into the human body. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe and stay informed.